Hey mamas, I am Carrie from Reset Brain and Body here for your Mental Health Monday. So today we're talking about a topic that I'm so glad we're talking about because it was very relevant to me over the weekend even, and it's about how to love your kids when you don't like them. I have a three-year-old and he's amazing and he is hilarious and caring and great older brother. But he also is difficult, <laughs> very, very difficult. And I found myself this weekend just like, I don't like you. I don't like you. And um, it was when he went and scraped my face. And you can even see a couple marks on my face. So mama, raise your hand if this has ever happened to you where your kid scraped your face because it was 5.15 in the morning and I told him to go back to bed. Um, I, I had my own like, Oh my gosh, what is this? What is going on? Um, why are you so mean, right? And, and later people validated, you have a three-year-old. It's okay, this is how three-year-olds are. But in that moment, it is terrifying when your kid loses their cool, you wanna lose your cool, and you feel like you're doing everything wrong, you are such a failure, and you just wanna like not see your kid for a very long time. like. <laughs> just i need a break right so i know that this is our super normal feeling i know that at any age that our kids are we have these feelings of like not liking our kids so the first thing i want to do is just take a moment and validate that feeling give you permission to feel that way and that talk to any mom any parent they probably feel similarly or have at one point <laughs> during a week a month a year a life stage with a child Okay, so in those moments when we really do not like our children, the first thing is simply to be aware, aware of our anger, aware of our irritability, like what is happening inside of us? Anger is an interesting emotion. We talked about it last week, but we can typically tell when we're getting angry based on the body cues. And so the top of our head, our hands, our feet, our extremities are the things that become tense and are the things that are cueing to us that, okay, there's... There's something happening in my system. Um, I always also like to think about anger and really any big emotion as specifically when happening to our kids, right? This stuff can happen later in the day, can happen midday, can happen in the morning. And we typically wake up with a certain amount of reserves, right? A certain amount of energy that we have to extend towards the bigger things that happen throughout the day, right? The stuff that you don't expect. And so, I like to think of it as I wake up and I'm a glass of water. How far is my water already filled in my glass when I wake up, right? Did I not get good sleep? Did I have to wake up a bunch of times because I had a crying kid or because I was having weird dreams or hot flashes or whatever? Um, did I go to bed too late? Did I have too much sugar or wine the night before so I just feel off in the morning? Did I wake up too late, right? So anyways, all these things that contribute to how full is my water in my glass when I wake up in the morning? And then how much space do I have to react and respond to whatever else is gonna happen throughout the day? And at 5.15, if you didn't get a good amount of sleep and you're not feeling like your best self because you ate too much pizza the day before or whatever it is, and your kid's waking up, yeah, you're probably gonna have very, very, very little capacity to be able to handle the emotional outburst from your child, which will tip you over to not liking your child very quickly and very early in the morning. So just kind of understanding the way that our emotions and kind of our stressors can play into then our levels of capacity that we actually have. Okay, so that moment when you are not liking your child, this is also an opportunity to calm down ourselves, right? We try and tell our kids, calm down, calm down, calm down. We try them not to you know, go through a full tantrum, even though we know it's exactly what they might need. We too have to breathe and be mindful because the best way to approach our kid is to come from a conscious place. And what does that mean? A conscious place means an intentional place, a mindful place, a place in which we are not up here and they are matching us. And then we go up here and they go up here and it just continues to rise and rise and rise and rise and escalate until they're slamming doors and tears and you feel so much guilt because you're like, what did I, what did I just do, right? <laughs> I just totally screamed at my kids. I completely lost my cool. 
So we have to be aware of our own stressors. That's why I talk about the glass of water. That's why we talk about how we feel stress and anger in our body so that we can be aware like, whoa, my kid is being extra right now. What's going on with me? So breathing, of course, breathing, taking deep breaths, moving our body, right? Even if you just have to like in that moment, do a couple jumping jacks, do it. Um, Taking a break. And then releasing intentionally, and we talked about this last week with anger too, is that if we can find a mindful release of the anger. One thing I talked to a client about last week was, you know, she was like, I feel like I'm yelling at my kids all the time. I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. We lose our temper. It's okay. But next time, instead of yelling at them, yell at the fridge, yell at the doorway, open the door and yell outside. Don't try not to yell at the kids but show them what a healthy release of anger is. When you're irritable, what to do? You know what, like I need to just erupt, but kids, I'm not gonna erupt at you. I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna erupt over here. This is what I need to do when I'm feeling super agitated, stressed, whatever it is. We're gonna circle back to this at the end of this segment. But the last thing with just in that moment, it's what else is making you angry? You know, really being able to ask yourself that. Is it simply that your kid isn't listening and you've asked them 10 times to clean off the dinner table so that you guys can sit down and eat? Or are you angry about other stuff? Are you angry because you're burned out? Are you angry because you have been at home all day with no break? Are you angry because you're continually neglecting your own needs? Right, so diving a little bit deeper to say, okay, why do I have such little capacity? Why is my water so full? Why do I not have the reserves to handle when my kid is pushing the limits and testing me? Okay, so actually as far as intervening with our children. So our kids want our attention. Our kids want love and discipline. They need love and discipline. How does love show up? Having a really strong relationship with your kid. And one of the best ways to do that, and this is quite simple, I promise you, it's very, very simple. 20 minutes of undivided attention a day. That doesn't mean you have your phone on you and you're scrolling, "Uh uh-huh, yeah, that's cool, wow, wow. When they say, watch this, watch this, watch this. This means like getting down on the ground and playing with them with no other distractions. This means that you are not just taking them on a walk or going and running errands with them. It's you are talking with them. You're engaging with them. You're actually listening to them. You are reading books. You're practicing your letters with 20 minutes of undivided attention a day. 20 minutes. I promise you that will improve your relationship with each one of your children if you give them 20 minutes. I know for me and my son, it's nighttime. I take on nighttime routine because to me, that's like my 20 minutes at least where I am devoted to him, no other distractions. Same with the baby. It's in the morning. Like I just want to snuggle and be with him in the morning before the world wakes up or sometimes at night if my three-year-old wakes up at 5 a.m. <laughs> like he's been doing. <laughs> but at night, my three-year-old and I have really cool conversations. Like that's when we talk about the day. That's when we talk about lessons for the day. That's when we read books and we love making up songs together. But that's our 20 minutes. And yeah, I'm like, okay, it's 8 o'clock. It's 8.15. Sometimes. But most of the time I find that I can be really, really present because I've carved that out and I've been very intentional. I'm not trying to give him 20 minutes while I'm rushing to get dinner on the table or at lunchtime or when I also have the baby who needs me. It's 20 minutes when I know is just his. And it makes a world of a difference for how his day wraps up and how he starts the next day. And for me, okay, playing, putting down our devices, 20 minutes. Also, when it comes to discipline, coming up with the terms together. So I'm thinking about it. I think this morning, I think this morning, my three-year-old and I were talking And I said, okay, bud, we used to take away your car when you got upset, and that would usually make you more mad. So what was something that you think we could do that lets you know, "Uh uh-oh, I made a mistake, Uh uh-oh, I wasn't listening to the rules that you know would be helpful in helping you calm down? And he's like, what does calm down mean? What does calm mean? And so we talked about what calm means, and I said, you know, when you're calm, you make good decisions, you make good choices. 
because your big feelings aren't getting in the way. When you're calm, usually you make a choice that is not a mistake. You make a kind choice, you make a patient choice. And so we talked about it and we decided that his consequence, his punishment is a break, a break to give himself an opportunity to calm down. So everyone talks about timeouts and there's all this controversy on timeouts and time ins and the language you use. We use the word break or we use reset. A little bit ironic, but <laughs> it is important, right? I'm gonna give you an opportunity to calm down. How about you go to your room? And okay, it was funny. I was talking to my nanny about it this morning. She's like, well, so like, how is that process actually getting him to the room? And I was like, oh, it's not good. It's not like he's willfully like, I'm gonna go to my room. No, I mean, sometimes that does happen and it feels like mom win, but most of the time I have to like carry him upstairs to his room. And sometimes we have to like the door. But then 98% of the time, when he comes out of his room and it could be two minutes later, it could be 20 minutes later, he's in a better mood and he apologizes unprompted. But I'm not, I'm not punishing him. I'm not isolating him in a way that makes him feel ashamed. It's, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to calm down. Sounds like you need a break. Why don't you just have some alone time? And so the way in which we're approaching it is much more compassionate and much more strength space versus like negative consequences and you're bad, you're, at, you know, trust me, I use the language, you're acting naughty. <laughs> but I also try and follow that up with, you're a good person, you're a good kid, you are kind, you are patient, you are loving, you are caring. Sometimes you do naughty things, right? And there's a difference there because we don't wanna build on their shame story. We want them to know that you make them some choices that aren't the greatest. And that's okay. Go reset and then come back and be who you intend to be. Be that calm kid that can make those decisions that feel empowering. Okay, so we also know this usually as parents that we have to communicate clearly, communicate consistently, right? The follow through. I know as a mom, like it's hard for me to sometimes like stick to my guns and not let him negotiate with me. And I notice the moments when I am very decisive and I'm very stern, like this is what's happening. I'm giving you two choices and I don't count, right? I'm not like, I'm giving you two choices and now I will count to 10. It's like, no, I'm giving you two choices make a decision. And if not, like this is going to happen. For example, last night, you either sit down in the bath or I turn on the shower, sit down or turn on the shower. And then I noticed myself giving him so much more time and time and time. And I was like, what am I doing? No, you're not sitting. I'm turning on the shower. It doesn't need to be a three minute negotiation and me waiting. It's like, no, do it right away. And then of course he freaked out. And then he was like, I was like, why did I do that? It's like, well, I wasn't listening. And why weren't you sitting? I didn't sit down. So you turned on the shower. I was like, yeah. And it was cool. It was good. He, rebound, he rebounded really quickly. And so did I. I never had to get upset. It was more so just reminding myself like, hey, be consistent. Be stricter. And as moms, it's hard. It's hard. I get it. Um, another thing you can do is active ignoring. This is something that I learned from teachers that like instead of active listening, we actively ignore. So when they are doing behavior that we're not fond of, you know, we're not going to give them that attention. And sometimes this can feel difficult or a little bit harsh, but it really is important for them understanding that we're not going to reinforce and enable kind of that poor behavior that a lot of times they're doing out of attention seeking. Okay, so this is all super important for how we manage our kids, learn to love our kids, <laughs> even when we don't like them, but more than anything else, it's about you. It's about you asking yourself again that question, why am I angry? Why am I irritable? Why am I waking up with only this much space to handle the day? What's going on? Am I not claiming my opportunities? Am I waiting to ask for permission to take care of myself? Or am I saying, no, I got 20 minutes. I need the 20 minutes too. That 20 minutes of unconditional love, support, attention for your kid, you also need it. Because that is what prevents you from getting to the point where you completely lose it or where you're not able to be calm and conscious and intentional when dealing with your kid's outbursts. So make sure that you designate 20 minutes a day to yourself, whether it is waking up early to create that buffer. And I know, I get it. Some mornings I'm like, I would seriously have to wake up at 4.30 in order to have my buffer 
but okay, maybe I wake up at 5.15. That means I gotta get to bed earlier. <laughs> it means I need to be asleep by 9.30, 9.45, and I need to make that really intentional. Or I need to make sure I exercise, or get outside, or read a book, or have my coffee in silence, or I need to go drive around for 20 minutes by myself. I need to practice my gratitude and focus on the joy and the wins and the good things. Every morning when I have my buffer, <laughs> I do my gratitude journal and it's called the three minute morning. It's on Amazon. You can find the journal. It's super great, but it asks me what the three best things were from today, but I always write yesterday because I do it in the morning and I write three specific things that happened the day before. And I usually try and think about those special moments with my kids. And that really helps me focus on the joy and the good and the beauty that's in the relationship of even having kids, right? <laughs> Sometimes you forget, you're like, why did I do this to myself? They really are lovely and they want your love and we want their love and we want to be able to create this amazing, beautiful, copacetic relationship. And it starts with you taking care of yourself as best you can. And again, it's not overwhelming. It's not daunting. 20 minutes, 20 minutes. Now, if you have seven children, I wish you luck. But if you have four, even then, like it's doable. Tack yourself on, you're the fifth. Okay, you can do that. 100 minutes a day for your kids and for you. That's how we learn to love our kids even when we don't like them. It has to start with us. Hopefully these are some helpful tips. If you have questions, please do drop them in. Um, I look forward to talking to you guys next time. And um, if nothing else, use this 20 minutes as the opportunity to just breathe and check in with yourself. All right, take care. Happy Monday.